Hey, how's it going guys? Today, I'm going to be taking you through what is essentially a perfect King's Indian game from both me and my opponent, which doesn't end in a dead draw. So don't click away from the video just for that. Um, although we both played pretty perfectly, we didn't both play perfectly every single move the whole game because it was kind of a long game. It was like 50 moves. So we have a King's Indian, like I said. We have g6. We have knight c3. We have bishop g7. We have e4 and d6. This is the classic King's Indian setup. And after knight f3, we have castles. This is the position where if you play the King's Indian, this is what you're likely to get. And d6 is necessary to stop e5 coming with an attack on the knight. And you might say, well, white can just play e5 anyway. But after takes takes... You can trade the queens and then play knight g4, threatening the e5 pawn now with the bishop and the knight, and threatening a fork on f2 to win the rook. So d6 stops e5 because of that. Quickly, before we get into the rest of the video, if you enjoy, please drop a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And back to the game. We have bishop e2. We have c5. I've been really enjoying c5 over e5 recently. e5 is the main line where you have like d5 or um, like bishop e3, knight c6, d5, knight e7. And the idea is for black to play like f5, g5, f4, g4, etc. and attack on the king side. But I had a pretty bad like win to loss ratio in that. So I started playing c5, where the typical idea is d5 and then e6. And say after castles, you typically take. And white can take with either the c or the e-pawn. They're both good. Most people take with the e-pawn though. And then I like to bring my rook to e8. Battle for the open file. And I feel like I've got a bit more play because my bishop is nice and open. Because I've played c5, which me meant that white advanced his pawn and gave me access to the dark squares rather than e5 which would cut off my bishop scope so my opponent actually takes the c5 pawn which is very rare i don't think i've ever actually seen it so i take if my opponent trades queens with me i'm just better because i now have the open file and one of the big differences in these positions in the King's Indian where the d-pawns get exchanged is that black has massive control over the d4 square. White uh, has no pawn on the e or c file that can like attack that square because they're too far advanced. White's control over the d5 square is easily countered because of e6. Or had I played e5 and the d-pawns got exchanged, then c6 would control the d5 square. So we have no queen trade. We have bishop g5. I play knight c6. Knight c6 is played because it helps to control the e5 square. And it also defends the e7 square. Because say there's a variation where like e5, knight g4, and the queens are exchanged. If my knight wasn't on c6, then bishop takes e7 would be possible. But because I put my knight there, it not only controls the e7 pawn, but also attacks the e5 pawn if it advances. So white just castles, which is logical. I play bishop g4. Neither of us want to take each other's queens because it means that the other one will just take back with a rook and control the file. So you kind of want your opponent to take rather than taking yourself. The reason that I play bishop to g4 is because I want to trade it for the knight. And you might say, well, surely you're giving up the bishop pair. Yes, but this bishop has no future because of the e4 and c4 pawns blocking in the bishop's scope. And in the style of the King's Indian, especially with my c5 pawn controlling d4, I want to control the dart squares. So if I can get rid of this knight that is controlling e5 and d4, 
then I can stick my C knight onto D4, which will be far better than this light squared bishop. So H3, I take, bishop takes, and I go E6. I don't want to play knight to D4 immediately, just because it's not going anywhere. The computer says it's an inaccuracy after bishop to e2. Inaccuracy might be a bit strong, but I didn't see a need to rush. I thought I'd play e6 first, which the computer prefers. It just, like I said before, stops a knight from coming here. And there is still no e5 move because my knight controls e5. And if my knight was on d4, then e6 wouldn't be playable because then e5 would come with an attack on the knight because my knight would no longer be controlling that square. All very complicated positional maneuvering. Knight e2, knight e5. The computer doesn't like it, but I'm attacking this bishop and I am threatening to damage his pawn structure. Because knight to d4 now doesn't come with the same threat because he's just going to exchange. Like knight d4, knight takes d4, queen takes d4. Queen c2, there's a rook coming to the d file. My queen's a bit stranded, it probably has to go to e5 to try and get out. And I mean it's a fine enough position, but there's no need to let white exchange his knight which is a whole lot worse than my knight. So instead I go to e5. We have queen b3, which attacks b7, and I go queen b6. Again, I would love my opponent to take me, because then I take with my a pawn, which defends my c5 pawn, opens my rook onto the a file. I'm attacking c4. I'm also attacking his bishop and threatening to double his pawns. And once my knights move, my bishop is going to be attacking b2. In the same vein, after bishop to e3, white would love me to take him, because after he takes back with the a pawn, I probably have to play b6, or maybe take here first and then play b6 to guard c5. And white's got the open a file. He's actually doing all right. So neither of us want to take. So after queen b6, bishop e3, I take on f3 and play knight d7. Knight d7 is designed just to defend c5, defend b6, although if there's a trade I'll probably take with the pawn, and also open this bishop up to attack b2, which is weak. I also now could bring my knight to e5 to put pressure on the weak f3 and c4 pawns. So rook fd1, here I play queen c6. Now I didn't like rook, rook fd8 defending the knight because of bishop g5 and here I probably have to play f6 and the bishop can just go back and I didn't like damaging my structure like that also just takes away my bishop's scope so I preferred queen to c6 defending the knight defending the pawn and defending the pawn my queen looks a little bit overloaded but there's no good tactics the only tactic that would work is bishop takes here, queen takes here, rook takes knight. But here I can take with the knight. So queen c6 works quite well. Computer preferred bishop the queen to c7 doing the same job. But I didn't like bishop here. Computer gives knight e5. It looks a bit flimsy to me. Just putting yourself in a pin voluntarily. So I decided on queen c6. We have rook d2. My opponent's intentions are very clear. He's going to double up on the d file. So I have rook fd8, rook a d1, bishop f6. Bishop f6 is an important move because it defends my rook so that if my knight moves uh, to b6 or to e5, then we can exchange the both pairs of rooks on d8 because my bishop will end up taking back the last one. And it also stops bishop to g5, attacking my rook on d8. So we have queen b5. I exchange, so I damage his pawn structure, although it's not really the end of the world. And knight e5. 
which is really the only move. It's the only move because my knight here is under attack. I have no other way to defend my knight. If I put it to b6, then after all the rooks are traded, my opponent takes on c5 and he's up a pawn. Same scenario if I bring my knight to f8 in this position. So I have to go to e5 because after the rooks are all exchanged, uh, bishop takes c5 will be met with knight f3 check and some weird maneuver apparently to d3. But the point is I win the pawn back and I can get out with tempo so that a7 doesn't hang. But even here, I could play something like b6 if I needed to, if I absolutely needed to. So we don't go for this. My opponent instead defends his f3 pawn and I defend my c5 pawn. b3 stops the knight from coming to c4, which would have been a very nice square otherwise. King f8. Just getting my king closer to the action, because I'm not really sure how I want to position my pieces yet. I'm kind of just tossing the ball back into my opponent's court and seeing what he's going to do. Bishop f4, bishop f6. I could have gone to d3 to attack the bishop, <clears throat> but I played bishop f6, and he took, which I didn't expect. It just didn't even cross my mind. And then f4, I played bishop b2. Which turns out to be the best move. And the reason is because if I retreat my bishop, he could potentially play e5 and just lock it in. This idea is to break out with f6. But I thought on b2, it dominates this knight's movement for a start. And it could apply nagging pressure from behind at some point, which gives it more maneuverability. And it's not vulnerable to any kind of attack from the enemy pieces. So king f3, king e7, it's the end game. So you bring your kings into the game. And bear in mind, I have 15 seconds and my opponent has 30. We have knight g3. The knight can't come to f5 or to h5. But if my, say I play a lazy move like h5, I was worried about e5 and the knight coming to e4 and infiltrating my position like that. So I played f5, which just controls the e4 square. If we have an exchange, then white's knight can't go forward, and it just has very um, hard, like, like a very hard time getting into the game. So my opponent goes e5, which cuts my king off from d6, because I'd love to march up the board like that. I have king d7, threatens to potentially come to the queen side and play a6. Knight f1, I play bishop d4, because I'm going to meet knight to e3 with bishop takes, probably. Because I feel like my opponent's knight is better than my bishop. So he goes to d2 instead to avoid a trade, goes to c4, plays a4. I, I'm just shuffling. I'm happy with a draw here because um, my opponent has all the play because it's a bishop versus knight, but it's a closed position. So if anyone's going to win, it's white. King e2, bishop d4, and now knight d6. And white can try and now target my weak pawns but it isn't easy because to target this pawn he needs to get to either c8 which is difficult or c6 and c6 can only be accessed by some very difficult squares to get to it's not really viable h7 is more so the weakness so again i keep shuffling I can't bring my king over to e7 because then he can win the a7 pawn and get to c6. So I just have to leave my king where it is and shuffle with my bishop. We have knight f7, bishop d4, 
knight g5 attacking the h pawn so i have to play h6 knight f7 going straight back attacking h6 and here if i play a move like h5 then the king can get in on the dark squares potentially so i play king e7 i go yo you fancy that h6 pawn bruv you fancy that now my opponent can go back to d6 here and threaten knight to c8 check in which case i'd have to go to, to d7 my opponent could also go to h8 attacking the g6 pawn in which case i would go g5 because i don't really have another choice and this is a very difficult position for white because if he takes like this then the e5 pawn is very weak apparently the only move to hold is h4 because he can win the pawn back like this if i take it and if i take here he wins the pawn back like that no no he has to play h5 to defend the knight to hold on to both wow okay that's tough to see my opponent takes on h6 though which loses to king f8 the knight has no way out it's, it's just stuck my opponent here has to play f3 so that the knight can jump out to g4 and white can at least get two pawns for the piece and try to hold this especially because a lot of his pawns are on light squares i can't target them with my bishop but he goes h4 and after king g7 knight takes f5 g takes f5 again he's got two pawns for the piece but as opposed to the previous position his kingside pawns are of, are of a much lower quality here than they are here right you can see the difference there here the pawns are actually a bit threatening and they defend each other well whereas in this position they're all on dark squares and only these two pawns can actually work together so we have king f3 king h6 king g3 king h5 f3 bishop c3 bishop c3 is a good move because i'm trying to get onto this diagonal to win the h4 pawn and i can't do that from f2 because the king guards that so king h3 bishop e1 and my opponent resigns because He's actually in Zugzwang, like he can't move, he's got to retreat his king, and then, I mean, I'm just going to pick up all of his pawns, and he's going to lose. So that's the game. I thought it was really, really interesting, just like, how there was like, you know, 40 moves, essentially perfect from both sides, come down to some tricky knight manoeuvring, where it, he just gets trapped, like his knight just gets trapped on the edge of the board. And, you know, I had six seconds. My opponent has 20 seconds, so maybe he should have fought a bit more. But that's Blitz Chess for you. If you stuck around to the end of the video, please drop a like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Stay tuned for future videos and have a good one.